So one of the things that I am most amazed about, especially when I peruse certain collecting forums, other YouTube channels, Facebook groups that are geared towards the antiques and collectibles trade, it's really interesting to see what controversies in the overall antiques and collectibles trade catch on and actually gain momentum. So that's why I'm doing this video, because for those unaware, there is a not so new development in the world of collectible trading cards. And it doesn't matter if you collect sports cards, it doesn't matter if you collect collectible gaming cards like Pokemon, Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh! This video is gonna apply to you. There is a company that just recently started offering a service that has really been unknown to the masses until now. What they do is you can pay them $75 and you can send them a factory sealed booster pack of trading cards. Again, it doesn't matter if it's Pokemon or even if it's sports cards. They will CT scan the contents of that pack without opening the pack and they will attempt to decipher what cards make up that pack of trading cards. Now, immediately when this was discovered, a lot of Timmy's, Kimmy's, and Poindexter's ran to the internet with pitchforks and torches drawn, claiming that this is going to upend the world of collectible trading cards, and it's going to cause the value of a lot of these vintage packs and booster boxes to drop in value, and or possibly, in the minds of the Timmy's, Kimmy's, and Poindexter's, go to zero. Now, I'm here to tell you the truth, that a lot of these individuals are making a mountain out of an anthill. And even by me calling this development an anthill, I'm really doing a disservice here because over the long-term trajectory of this market, this is not going to have any effect on the market the way the Timmy's, Kimmy's, and Poindexter's think it will. And that's why I want to do this video. So in order to do this video justice, we really have to talk about the history of antique authentication and the use of CT scanning in the overall antiques and collectibles trade. Because big spoiler alert, it's been in use since the 1980s and 1990s on a massive scale. Believe it or not, beneath the surface of the antiques and collectibles trade, auction companies have been using services that utilize CT scanning technology. Now, to be fair, I am not saying that a lot of these major auction companies are scanning a lot of the collectible trading card products that are coming in that they're auctioning off factory sealed. What I am saying, though, on the antique side of the equation, CT scanning has been in use since the 1980s and 1990s, and I'm going to prove it to you right now. All you got to do is log on to www.antiqueauthentification.com. I'm going to put a link to this company in the video description below. This company was established in 1997. I'm not saying anything you can't read on their website. They're based out of Hong Kong, and they specialize in authenticating antiques using scientific methods. Their clients include major auction houses, internationally recognized art dealers and museums, as well as private collectors. And if you play around on their site, they also talk about CT scanning. This is what they state. Although CT scanning and x-ray are not dating methods, they can safely be used in conjunction with other such techniques of observation and analysis to provide more complete information in the process of authentication. You see, back in the 1980s and 1990s, demand increased exponentially for investment-grade antiques, art, and antiquities. Collectibles were dead last, but collectible demand was increasing as well. Remember, in the 1980s, there was a massive boom in the world of third-party graded coins because coins were the very first collectible that was and is third-party graded. So there was a massive boom in that market, but in the 1990s, due to manipulation, due to Wall Street getting involved, the market pretty much cratered under its own weight because there was a lot of hanky-panky 
going on in that market that just wasn't just. And the government had to get involved. It was a complete mess. If you don't believe me, Google Merle Lynch Athena Fund. The Athena Fund was a prime example of why investing in antiques doesn't always work. It was basically a fund that was geared towards rare coin and antique investing that pretty much, how do I want to say this, wasn't on the up and up. That's all I'm going to say. You guys can research that for you. Now, where am I going with this? Because of this mass boom in the market for antiques, art, antiquities, and the like, there was a need for companies to come into this market and try to authenticate a lot of these items that we're now selling for, in some cases, millions of dollars. We're talking rare Ming Dynasty vases. We're talking really high-end historical antiques and artifacts. We're talking pieces of art that today would sell for hundreds of millions of dollars or more. This all got its start in the 1980s and the 1990s. So CT scanning was being used behind the scenes to look at these items and help authenticate them. It is nothing new. Even in the 1990s, by the time Magic the Gathering hit the market, by the time later in the 1990s when Pokemon came out, you are aware there were people talking about CT scanning back then. And in all honesty, looking back from today, 2024, all the way back to the 1990s, it did not affect the market for Pokemon cards or Magic the Gathering. And to be fair, some of you don't know your history. If you understand how the first original Magic the Gathering cards were produced and packaged, you would know that booster packs of Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, Arabian Nights, Legends, Antiquities, The Dark, they could all be searched. All you had to do was hold one of those booster packs. You didn't have to open it. You just had to hold it up towards the light and you could search the pack with your bare hands. People used to do it in stores. They would walk into a store that sold vintage Magic the Gathering products, which at that time they were brand new products. They weren't known as vintage yet because of course this is 1993. And people would literally try to search the packs and see what cards they were gonna get. This is nothing new. This is not a new development that is going to upend the entire collectible trading card market. Furthermore, I don't think a lot of you understand the reason why vintage sealed product is selling at the price point it is selling for. It is not because of the value of the individual cards. It is what those packs and booster boxes represent. How many people had the foresight back in the 1990s to keep this stuff factory sealed until today? Well, looking at the numbers, we know very few because I guarantee you there aren't that many factory sealed, authentic Arabian Nights booster boxes in existence. The same thing is true for certain Pokemon products. So obviously, if someone like me, an investor, is going to the market looking for those items, I hate to tell you, spoiler alert, I don't care what cards are in those boxes, what cards are in those packs. I'm not planning to open them because the value is in what those packs and boxes represent. If I'm investing in that, I just want to make sure I'm getting authentic. If I'm buying an Arabian Nights booster box, I want to make sure that I'm getting authentic Arabian Nights cards in that box. I want to make sure the box was not tampered with. I want to make sure it's authentic seal on that box. I want to make sure it's not been resealed. That's what I care about. I don't care how many of Library of Alexandria's are in that box, if any at all. I'm not buying it for that reason. So a lot of the Timmy's, Kimmy's, and Poindexter's that are coming on YouTube claiming this is going to upend the entire market, they do not understand basic economics of what gives something like that value. This is what a lot of people do not realize. The second thing I want to bring up, even if you have someone 
Let's say that you have someone who has like a factory sealed pack of Pokemon cards, their first edition base, and they get the pack X-rayed and it comes back. Oh my gosh, you got a first edition Holofoil Charizard in that pack. And if you grade it, it's probably going to come back a PSA 9 or a PSA 10. And the person chooses to open that pack. That actually helps the investor in vintage product because now there's one less sealed pack in existence. It doesn't hurt the market the way you think it does. And even if you use the argument, well, Sean, look at the flip side. Now there's an extra first edition holofoil Pokemon base Charizard out there that's graded by PSA. That card was already in existence. It just was unknown because it was sitting in that factory sealed booster pack. The idea that this development or so-called new development of CT scanning technology being applied to the collectible trading card market is going to upend the market is 100% overblown. A lot of the Timmies are once again stepping over dollars to pick up pennies. And in this case, it makes absolutely no sense. You also need to remember, collectors used to weigh Pokemon packs to see if the pack contained any hollow foil cards. Now, I do know, obviously, that's different than scanning the pack and attempting to know for sure. But CT technology is not always that reliable at this point in time. It never was. Ask anybody who has been misdiagnosed, yours truly, with a serious medical condition because the CT scan showed one thing. And when doctors did an invasive procedure on the individual or the patient, they discovered the CT scan was completely wrong. This is not perfect. Do not listen to people out there that are claiming this is a perfect technology that is going to upend this market. I'm here to tell you it is not. Take a step back. Take a deep breath. Understand that once again, the reason that vintage packs in sealed boxes have value is what they represent, not by what is in them. Thank you for watching. Have a great night. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you need me to do a follow-up video on this, I gladly will. I'm just telling you, CT technology, CT scanning, has been around since the 1980s and 90s and applied to the antiques and collectibles trade. Beneath the surface, no one really knew, and it had no impact on any of these markets. Its primary use is in authentication. This is not really going to change anything. The value of your beloved cards when we're talking factory sealed packs and booster boxes doesn't matter as much as what the product represents due to the scarcity and availability of those items on the open market. Thank you and have a good night.